Good morning. I'm here today to join Harry Pratt on the bank at the wonderful Linear Fisheries and we're talking winter carp. Fisheries? Yeah. Oxley's? Oxley steak. Yes, mate. What, had tell, us, uh, tell us what you know about it, mate. Well, obviously it's had a fair share of publicity in the past, hasn't it? And yes, yeah. I know, um, I know for a fact there's a massive common in there which does over 48 pounds. So I know the lake done a 45 pound mirror a few days ago, so that was a big fish. Yeah. Um, but there's other 40s to go at and a massive head of 30s. So I'm oh, definitely uh, feeling confident for the, the night ahead to see what we can, we can do. So you've, you've chosen your swimmers, right? Yeah. So, uh, so I got down yesterday. I did fancy a go on Manor Farm yes. just, uh, just across the road. Okay. Um, but after a couple of laps, there wasn't really any swims free that I fancied. Right. Um, so I headed over here, done a lap. And uh, with the easterly wind, we've got hammering in at the minute. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't a no-brainer, but it was an easy decision. I thought I'd sit on the back of it. We've got, like I say, we've got it off the back of the wind. so. It's easy to cast, it's comfortable to fish in, you've not got a freezing cold wind blowing in your face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you can drop your gear off just there, which is always a bonus. Yeah, of course. Um, what about vision wise? I mean, did you see any fish at I all? I didn't, or? I didn't see any fish. I did hear that a uh, guy, I think it was a swim or two away from us, yeah. had a nice nice 38 the, okay. the night before I got here. Yeah. So, so it's that's local always, knowledge yeah, and just definitely. Listening yeah. to anglers and, yeah. Um, but on the flip side of that, I think there's like 1,500 fish in this, so right. for what, 26 acres, something yep. like that? That's a heck of a lot of fish, yeah, there's yeah, a lot of fish. Definitely. Um, and so winter time, yep. these fish are going to slow down, uh, like we're seeing now, not seeing anything move no, around? No, or... it's been very quiet, yeah. um, there's been the odd one show, one or two here and there, yeah. um, but I think when it comes to winter, you need to select a venue that you've got a chance in catching fish. Yeah. It's, it's not, you don't want to sit on a 100 acre lake with yeah, yeah. five carp in it. Definitely. Because although you might catch one, the, the chances are stacked against you. Yes. And in the winter fishing, it's bad at the best times. You sit there cold, you can't get a takeaway because the gate's shut too early. <laughs> yeah. <And laughs> That's not today. No, I no, hope no. not. I hope <laughs> not. But you uh, need to select a water that's got fish in it that are, are going to be catchable. Good stock level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, obviously it's a bit cold now, isn't it? We're yeah. like well into winter, really. Um, the water temperature's really cold, air temperature's really cold. So yeah. I've scaled all my bait size down. I'm not really putting out big particles, okay. just crumb oily, sweet corn, a little bit of pellet, yep. and then with a liquid additive as well okay. for uh, obviously added attraction. Okay. But baiting application-wise, before I start making it up, I'm like really scaled down as well, like two or three spots every couple of hours. So yeah. not a lot. But obviously, over the course of 24 hours, it, it builds up. Okay. Is, it, is there a reason for that then? Is there a, they're just not not, not much? I just don't much? think they're as hungry out there. Yeah, if, yeah. if if they're in your swim and you've put in smaller particles, they'll stay in your swim a lot longer. So I've got to pick it out. Right. Um, and obviously, if you, if they feed on a big boily, they're going to fill up a lot quicker. Yes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I sort of get on a crumb approach and and less bait. Okay. Um, and I just don't, I don't think you need as much yeah, bait yeah. in the winter. Okay. They're not as hungry, are they? So. What about colour then as well? So I go bright. You go bright. I go okay. bright. Yeah, I yeah. think. Uh, go bright or go home. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, go yeah, hard cool. or go home. We put it in. Do it right. You got to yeah, do it yeah. right, haven't you? Cool, man. Yellow. It's uh, it's a great colour. It's proven in it. Yellow yeah, pop-ups catch fish all year round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, especially in the winter when you may be fishing a single. Yep. Um, and sweet corn is sweet corn in yeah, it. Yeah. Can't go wrong with sweet corn. No, so. That's it, that's it. Right. So literally, got 15 millers here. Obviously you crush them so it doesn't matter what you got. Yeah. I'll put a couple of scoops in them in the boiler crusher. Yeah. It's quite nice as well because this time of year if you if you're crumbing it up and you're not putting as much in, yep. you haven't got to bring as much bait with you. Okay. So would you normally do this on the bank as well? Yeah. It's easy, isn't it? It is. Again, if it's small quantities, so yeah. you know, three or four kilo of boiler will easily last you a weekend fishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, this time of year. So we'll pop the lid off. Yeah, cool. Give it a, a shake. Cool. You see that lovely, Man, lovely bit of oily crumb. Yeah, yeah. All different size particles, but so we're fishing in like 12, 13 foot of water out there. Yes. So when that falls through the water column, in in my mind, I'm if I'm spotting accurately, one spot of that is probably landing in a radius of 
five or six feet yeah. as it sort of falls through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So I'll add in a few of these 10 mil boilies. Okay. They uh, match the 15 mil essential cell as well, so they're the same flavour. Yes. But literally just a couple of handfuls of them. Okay. A bit of the old. Classic. Fantastic yep. sweet corn. Yep. Probably about a third of a kilo. Okay. Nice. And then, again, all carp love pellet. Yep. The fish here are reared on them, so I think you're mad not to use pellet when the fish are. I like to say reared on them. Yeah. Again, probably a third of a kilo of that. Okay. Then I'll give that a dry mix up. You can see just the colour of it. It's just yeah. Stands out like a sore thumb, doesn't it? Appetising. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to eat it. No, 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 no. <laughs> so stick the sausages. Yeah, in. <laughs> that's it. Definitely. That's the dry mix. Yep. Yeah, and then just for a little bit of attraction. We've just got the stick mix liquid. Again, right. matches the boily flavour. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And uh, probably go for about a third of a bottle of that as well. So nice. squeeze that in there. The other really nice thing with using boily crumb is as it falls through the water column, it will leave a cloud. Okay. So if the fish are up in the water, sometimes help just draw, just draw them in. Yes. But that's it, mate. That's, that's basically it. Okay, mate, talk us through your rig and what you're using now. Yeah, so this is my solid bag rig. Okay. Um, super easy. I use it on a method feeder as well, the exact same rig, just obviously ditching the lead right. and swapping it for a method feeder. But yep. it's super easy. It's just, that's 25 pound uncoated braid. Yes. Um, through to a size four beak point hook. Okay. That's 90% of my fishing is what I've done them hooks, to be honest. They're super reliable and, and super sharp, so do just what you need from a hook, really. Okay. Um, my hook bait, they're two little mainline 8mm match wafters, yeah. so I find they just sit sit nicely over the pellet, lifting it off the deck slightly, cool. neutral, neutralising the weight of the hook, so that when the fish comes in, I don't think they're actually taking that hook bait, they're actually feeding on the pellet, right. and the hook bait just gets sucked in yeah, yeah. Um, by accident, I suppose, okay. and then hopefully nailed, but yeah. um, then that's just got a little anti-tangle sleeve, which is a bit unnecessary, so it's all going to a bag anyway, but helps keep it all nice and neat. Yeah. Up to the 50 pound lead free leader. Right. Which I just have a loop spliced in the end. Yep. And that just gets looped to loop onto my onto my leader which is attached to my main line for, okay. for casting. So that's pretty straightforward. Yeah. I think it's about as simple as a carp fishing rig gets these days. Yeah, okay. Um, and what about your bag mate? What's so my, my bag is one I made earlier. Hey, okay. Um, <laughs> see nice and tight. Just with a little bit of PVA tape wrapped around to, to keep it all strapped in. Yeah. Nice and neat. You're using the main um, pellet as well. Yep. So just the, the standard pellet, spot and yeah. spot and PVA pellet. So there's probably four or five different types of pellet in there. Okay. A little bit of various attraction for the fish to to sort of home in on and yeah. and feast upon. Okay. Um You're using quite a small bag. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't want nothing big. Yeah. Just enough for, for the attraction to get them in really. Okay. When that folds out on the bottom, it probably covers an area of my hand. So that was spread open. The smaller pellets will fly a little bit further. Right. I'm just leaving a little little parcel of bait um, okay. on the lake bed. Yeah, perfect. The beautiful thing with these is, mate, you can cast them anywhere. Yes. And once it opens up, you'll be you'll be fishing effectively. So. Yeah. And you should hit that with distance as yeah, well. You can, yeah, you can. Yeah, I'll probably cast one of these 120, 130 yards. A stunning morning wake up call. 27 pounds of lovely Oxfordshire mirror carp. This one fell for a solid bag, and uh, I've got a slightly bigger one just in there in the other net. So it's good I had two nets set up, sat, sat there waiting. So I'm gonna slip this one back, we'll get that one out, and crack on with the day ahead.
Well, there we go. I arrived 24 hours ago. And if you'd have told me I'd be holding this one up for the camera this morning, I'd have snapped your hand off. Well happy with this. 30 pound, five ounces, taken on a solid bag, along with seven other fish. So I'm proper made up. I had a lovely 27, a 25, and uh, the rest all big doubles. So there's definitely a good head of fish here in Oxley's Lake. And I've still got a couple of nights ahead of me. And there's a lot bigger fish than this in here, so. Let's see what we can winkle out. Right, mate, so we're going to get some spots out. Yes, dude. So we've got the mix all made. Yep. As I say, I'm using a, a medium sized spot. Yep. These seem to be optimal for casting a bit further. Yes. Um, obviously the bigger ones can be a bit heavier and smaller ones. Okay. Not so much, so. Yeah. Are you using a shock lead on that as well? I am, yeah. I've got yeah. a braided shock leader. It's yep. a £50 braid yep. uh, through to our £12 mono. Yep, cool. Um, again, for casting a bit further, you need a shock leader. Yeah. And the mono obviously flies a dream anyway. Yeah. But then the rod I've got is uh, a stiff, higher spod rod. Yep. So free spot made these to, to pop a punch a spod which is, as you'll see, comfortable. I'm fishing at 20 wraps, yeah. 80 yards. And you see you launch out there, hit the clip, bang, perfect. right over the right hand rod, that one. Yeah, yeah, perfect. So, seagulls are yeah. on me like a rash, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think most of that will fall before they get to it. Yeah. It's only the larger bits, and they'll, they'll get that anyway. But yeah, yeah. Couple of spots now. Hopefully that will uh, trigger a bit of a feed as, uh, as we head into darkness, yeah. it's four o'clock now, so... Mate, this is, this is a proper tidy bit of food you've got going on here, mate. Oh, only the best, mate, only yeah. the best. This is maple cured pork shoulder. Damn. And it smells proper fruity, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On a, on a serious note, obviously eating well on the bank and keeping warm yeah, yeah. Is, a, is a necessity. Of course it is, yeah. Um, you know, lots of cups of tea, hot tea and... Well, I've, I've been... got through about seven litres of water in 24 hours, so... Wow, okay. We're not doing too bad. Not no. just me, though, that was you as well. Yeah, yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry. I did notice as well you had a hot water bottle. Oh, yeah, 100%. Uh, that's, a, that's a classic idea, man. That's yeah, a really definitely. good idea. I was panicking the other week because I uh, couldn't find my one, so I borrowed my little sister's <laughs> and burnt a hole through it because I put the water into it. Oh up, no! So luckily, mine made an appearance. Oh, okay. But I've still not replaced those. <laughs> <laughs> You're in a lot of trouble, mate. I oh, know. So mate, we've come to the end of the session. It's minus three degrees, it's bloody freezing, but you've done amazingly well. Yeah, well done, no, mate. Well done. Take, take what I caught, that's for sure. Okay, mate, let's, um, let's summarise the session. During the colder months, location's just as important as it is any other time of the year, if not more. So I'll always look for a deep part of the lake or the middle of the lake. The fish will get pushed there through pressure. However, don't ignore the margins because I've had good winter sessions on some lakes that have got deep margins where the fish do tuck away for a nice bit of peace and quiet. I like to keep my baiting approach nice and simple in the winter. Just a little bit of boily crumb, a little bit of sweet corn and loads of liquid additives for extra attraction just to help draw the fish into the swim. You don't need to be piling in kilos and upon kilos of bait to try and get a bite. You're much better off fishing for a bite at a time and seeing how the session unfolds. Even throughout the winter months, I use the same rigs and the same end tackle that I do during the summer and during the warmer months. A lot of people like to scale things down. I don't think this is necessary personally, as long as I'm using a nice sharp hook and a rig I've got confidence in, I'm super happy casting it out into the pond. A final tip for the winter months is to make sure you're nice and warm on the bank, because if you're nice and warm on the bank, you'll fish far more effectively and confidently than you will if you're uncomfortable. I like to bring plenty of food with me. A hot water bottle is an absolute must have. And as well as that, lots of food, lots of hot drink, and plenty of gas for your stove to keep you going through these cold winter nights.
So you now kiss the fish now, do you? I'm not into that. You're no. not into no. that. Okay, only no girls. Worries. Okay. <laughs> well, actually, only my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll cut that one out. <laughs> Can we not get some motorboat in a spoonful? <laughs> <laughs> all, in your, all in your beard. Um, and that should that should last thirty seconds, you say? <laughs> <laughs> Just arrived here at Linear Fisheries. We're going to do a session with Harry Pratt, who's doing. I don't know what the f is doing. So, mate, we've come to the uh, the end of the session. Um, it's been a good, good, but. Lingling like Donald. Lily like warm. <laughs>